Hey guys, how's it going? Anthony Mutraji here, back with a new video lesson for you all. Before I get to the actual lesson, I have a little challenge for you guys. If anyone is able to guess the time signature and the beat placement of the bass line I just played, you get a free video lesson, 15 minutes long, whatever topic you like. Time signature and beat placement. Leave your comments below. The first one to get it right gets a free lesson. Alright, so on to the lesson now. Today we're going to take a look at basic syncopation exercises. Syncopation is basically the usage of your upbeats a little more than usual. And this is something you can hear in a lot of styles of music. Um, from metal to jazz to funk, R&B, rock, soul, even Motown. Every, every um, genre of music has its own uh, set of syncopation ideas and concepts. Alright, so we're just going to have a very basic outlook at syncopation. What we're going to do is take a C major scale and play just quarter notes, all right? And the reason I'm stressing on the quarter notes is because syncopation is generally trickier with longer notes as opposed to shorter notes. So it's important to start backwards, start with long notes and then get into short notes. Generally, most syncopated ideas are short notes, but there are a lot of musical uh, content with long notes used in a syncopated manner. And a very classic example of that kind of usage is one of my favorite bands called Meshuga. They use syncopation and they have these long notes to the syncopation which kind of makes you lose the overall pulse. But then again there is a pulse to it so that's a deeper side of syncopation. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take quarter note C major scale and displace it in different rhythmic grids. There is a PDF for this lesson, the link to the download is in the description below, so download it, have it side by side with the video lesson right now. Okay, so what we're going to do is take C major scale and displace it. Okay, I've got my metronome here set at 90 BPM. The first displacement will be playing it on the second eighth note or the one N. Okay, two, three, four. Again. Okay, so I don't know if you noticed this, but my fingers are kind of shaking actually because I have to hold down the note and start it on a different place. So that's why it's super crucial to start with quarter notes. Okay, the next displacement would be the second 16th note or the one E. Okay, I'm going to put the metronome a little slower at about 75. So I'm just going to quickly sing the 16th. 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a... And the third displacement would be the fourth sixteenth or the uh, one uh. So one E and uh, two E and uh, four, one E and uh. Now, in quite a number of metronome apps, you can actually set every beat to 16th notes or 8th notes or triplets and so on and so forth. So what I recommend is doing that or program a click track on your recording software and really focus on those displacements. All right. There are two more displacements I want to talk about and they are to do with 8th note triplets. 
Okay, so eighth node triplets would basically be one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So we're going to start on the second triplet and play the same scale. One, two, three, four. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Now the next thing we're going to do is the third triplet. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet. Okay, now I've also written two more exercises in the PDF where I am doing the second sixteenth for two bars going up the scale and the second triplet coming back down. So let's quickly hear what that sounds like. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E and a one. Okay. Now, the reason I wrote that is because there are many um, musical phrases I have seen and heard being played wrong because a 16th note is a lot more centered and a lot more downbeat oriented. It's very even. But triplets are uneven, so they have a tendency to feel a little behind the beat. So a second 16th versus a second triplet, there's quite a big difference. So it's very important to be able to hear and play the different uh, variations of placement, rhythmically speaking. All right, so there's also the exercise of the third, the fourth 16th note and the third triplet. Let me try that real quick. One E and a two E. Again, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a Okay. I did mess up, but I'm just going to leave that because I want you to see what the actual shed looks like. It's not about perfection, but it's about the little errors and fixing them. All right. This is actually a part of an upcoming book that I'm working on, Rhythmic Studies for Melody and Harmony. So it'll give you an idea of what to expect from the book. I strongly believe rhythm needs good context in relevance to melody and harmony. So that's why I use the C major scale, long notes, just to get you guys started. And obviously feel free to do whatever you want after this, but get these few exercises down first. And then eventually you can just do whatever you want to with chords or bass lines or um, melodies. All right, so I hope you get something out of this. If you have any questions or suggestions, do leave comments below. And until the next one, I'll see you guys in the shed. Peace.